The competition for worst animated movie of 2022 is really heating up here, folks. Netflix and Pete Davidson have done the fusion dance to form the invincible Marmaduke. Ah! Oh! It looks like Marmaduke should be begging for some food. He looks emaciated. This animation really is disgusting. They were sure to put in farts, uh, inflation, farts while inflated. <laughs> definitely don't watch this thing if you're wanting a good experience, okay? The animation is so bad that there's a 50-50 chance that your face is gonna melt off like Raiders of the Lost Ark. So click away now if you don't want to press your luck, but if you do, be sure to press that subscribe button for me, leave me a like, and let's get ready for some Marma Puke. Quick anime backstory for Marmaduke 2022. It was directed by Aze Deepi. Aze? Aze Deepi? It was directed by Aze Deepi. Aze? Now I can't say it right. It was directed by Mark A.Z. Dipe, who directed Pixel Perfect on Disney Channel and three direct-to-video Garfield movies. And the company that did the animation for this movie also did the special effects for Pixel Perfect and those Garfield movies. So, you know, sure we're in for a treat. But the most awesome accolade to me by far for Marmaduke is that it's co-directed by Phil Nibelink, who is just a legend in my mind. He is the guy who made Romeo and Juliet sealed with a kiss. And if you like bad movies, then you are gonna love the story behind this one. I, got, I definitely gotta make a video on it soon, but to cut a long story short, this one guy, Phil Nibbling, cell animated this entire feature film over the span of four years, and it's just awful. It's an honor <laughs> to meet you, sire. What a legendary tale. And now he's co-directing Marmaduke. Marmaduke is voiced by SNL skeletal water salesman, Pete Davidson. And I'll be honest, I don't really like Pete Davidson that much, but he actually does fine with his voice acting here. I, I didn't feel like, I mean, he did exceptional, but I, I felt like he tried. Fine, you wanna play hardball? You got it, pal. So they start off by showing us that Marmaduke is a bad doggy. Not only by telling us this, but by showing us him rebel. I want justice! And I want it now! He's just upset that he's locked up in this bedroom during a kid's birthday party, but then he just goes to sleep. And he only wakes up when a bee lands on his nose. Not really much of a rebel, but he starts chasing it around and it leads to this. <laughs> this dog just goes crashing through the second story window of this house and all the kids are just amazed for some reason. I would be horrified. Dog could be injured. <laughs> Awesome! This girl is an utter sociopath. Be checking for shoeboxes of animal skulls under her bed. Somehow Marmaduke landing in this single above ground pool though causes an entire flash flood to occur. It's like Marmaduke, you surf in Pokemon Stadium. The texture is just so ugly too. It's supposed to be water, not gelatin. All the kids in the neighborhood are just jazzed to have their homes waterlogged. <laughs> And this is supposed to be an above ground pool, right? Okay, then there's not enough grass clippings in that water for it to represent that properly. Just no on an above ground pool for me, okay? I just can't be too sure that there's not a witch close by who's going to heat it up and slowly be turning me into stew. That's a real adult fear, right? I guess the whole world just thinks that this dog almost dying is funny since the clip goes viral. This news reporter lady then shows the clip and calls out the most famous dog trainer in the world to train Marmaduke. Guy won the last six world dog championships in a row. He will not compete again until he finds a worthy challenge. Well, guy, here it is. Uh, what kind of logic is that? You know, oh, I know how to find a new dog to train for a dog show. I will find the worst possible dog. How about I don't do that and ruin my win streak, okay? Here, I'm gonna fumble this bag now. No, I want, uh, Guinness is about to call me. I'm gonna keep going. But what do I know? Apparently the dog trainer thinks it's a genius idea. I will show the world that I can train any dog. Like a evilly genius idea since he does an evil laugh with it. <laughs> <laughs> the movie's trying to paint this guy in a bad light, but his motives are pretty good. It's like, yeah, ha, ha, I'm gonna make every dog on earth behave good. All right, do that. Thank you. I did not get the dog trainer's name too. I'm trying to remember it. It's Guy. Guy Hilton. Guy something. Guy um, Hilton. So I'm just gonna call him Guy Fieri, I guess. Guy Fieri goes to the family and he offers to train Marmaduke. And the dad isn't really on board at first, but then shenanigans occur. So he changes his mind. <laughs> His dad's ankles are so thin, it's like he's got Betty spaghetti limbs. Need to get some meat on those bones. Anyway, the trainer takes Marmaduke to the park to train, and Marmaduke's immediately like, no, piss off. So the trainer, um, fights the dog? As you wish. Mm. He 
freaking high jump kicks Marmaduke. He's basically Guy Sensei from Naruto. Dynamic entry. I was just joking about calling Pete earlier, but man, okay. This is the top dog trainer in the world though, so I guess I'm just gonna sit back and observe. As you insist. Then he just does this weird magic foot slap. Why is he assaulting this animal so much? All dogs will be going to heaven by the end of this movie, damn. Ow. A lot of this movie is just abuse of Marmaduke. He's getting electrocuted, things are falling on his head, and there's even a training montage where there's like this dog guillotine thing and it does whatever this is to Marmaduke. All I know is I'm gonna be waking up in a panicky sweat at 4 a.m. because of this thing. After they've trained, the master trainer Guy Fieri takes Marmaduke to enter a local competition, which is where we meet the evil dog trainers who look like the Da Vinci twins. Da Vinci? And their mean dog, who is voiced by J.K. Simmons, a.k.a. the Yellow M&M, a.k.a. the Farmer's Guy, a.k.a. Omni-Man. I don't think I want to tick off this dog. You're fighting so you can watch everyone around you die! Just as I said, Pete Davidson's voice acting is fine here. J.K. Simmons' voice acting is up to the usual quality it is, not a phoned-in performance. Come to buy some shampoo, fully bag. Or did you just want to see what a champion looks like up close? So if you like J.K. Simmons, his lines are pretty fun to listen to. He tries sabotaging Mark. Marmaduke by showing him to the craft services room, leading to what I can only describe as inflation fart kink snuck into a kid's movie. Uh -oh. <sighs> God did not create this. <laughs> That's awesome! No, this is not awesome. Obviously, Marmaduke loses the competition. At school the next day, the daughter and son are both bullied because of what happened. The son even gets physically assaulted. It's like, dude, my dog farted, calm down. You don't need to beat me up over it, okay? I'm getting the counselor. Marmaduke is pretty bummed that his whole family hates him now, so he tries to convince the trainer to take him back. He turns Marmaduke away, so Pete Davidson tries to prove it to Guy by running around the world. Really, he runs around the whole world. I'm just like wondering what this will do for him. Then this montage just cuts to a news report about a dog that's running around the world and Guy is saltily watching it on TV perfectly. I guess that's what it'll do for him. The family loves Marmaduke again now that he's no longer a failure. The trainer is now back on board to train Marmaduke and makes an interesting phone call. It's to like this head dog committee director person. I have a favor to ask the president of the World Dog Championship. And they imply, though, that they've basically smashed. They've Netflix and chilled before. They've Netflixed and, you know, put on Marmaduke and chilled, you know? They marma they Marmaduked, if you know what I mean. Oh, Marma, you're Duke. What kind of favor? But yeah, bro calls in a favor, and the favor is just to move him into the world championship of the dog competition. I think I figured out how this guy wins every year. <laughs> Are we sure Marmaduke is the underdog? Because he's seeming like the industry plant. And I especially noticed in this scene that the lip syncing was off. This girl's lip flaps don't match her dialogue at all. That Cozy place we went to last time. Mm, I'd like that. This is an American movie, right? So was the animation done before the voice acting? Weird choice. This does take us to the championship where we get to meet all the other competing dogs and like all good kids movies, it gives us a little bit of casual racism. First off, there's this Spanish dog named Juan Pedro and it's like, all right, all right, it can be named Juan Pedro and dogs can have names. But then the first competition is to see if a dog can resist a bacon version of its favorite food and Juan Pedro's favorite food. Let's see if Juan Pedro can resist the bacon taco for 30 seconds is tacos. Why couldn't the challenge have just been to resist eating bacon, okay? We didn't need your ha <laughs> so funny Spanish dog likes tacos joke. Uh, hi caramba. Looks like Juan Pedro has been disqualified. <sighs> Weirdly too, this is the only dog in the competition that is eliminated. I really thought that taco joke was gonna have kids snotting on themselves in laughter. Another dog in this movie is the French pink poodle that's just a creepy animal sex symbol. She's the romantic interest of Marmaduke and J.K. Simmons' dog. And then when they have the talent portion of the competition, her talent is just dancing around in loops to pop music. I mean, I guess she also like blows kisses and it's just not terribly impressive though. It may seem that way to you, but she actually gets a higher score than this English bulldog whose talent is to literally lift the stadium off the ground. Okay, that dog needs to be spelled backwards because he is gone. We get some more subtle racism with the dog from Asia when its talents are martial arts and as they put it, mystical powers of the East. And the mystical powers of the East. 
This dog can literally do magic. And I don't just mean like phony baloney stuff like that one guy who's like pushing his whole class over with the force. Wait, no, wait. The trainer also did some magic earlier though too. So why does it have to be mystical powers of the East? A dude from the West is doing the mystical powers. It's just the mystical powers now. Oh yeah, and yellow Eminem dog's talent is literally mind control. It has something to do with the dog shampoo, which just tells me that they clearly ripped this off from Dr. Draken. Leather rinse and obey. That's gonna be stuck in my head for the next week now. I'm here to wash your hair today. I forgot to mention that during the obstacle course portion of this competition, the evil dog tries to sabotage Marmaduke by putting shampoo on his paws, but it's like, how does Marmaduke not feel this? And then after that, how does the audience not notice that anything is amiss here? If I saw my dog contorting like that, I would assume his spine was broken in 20 places. I'm just a fool though, because apparently he's doing the ultimate speed run. Oh, I can't believe I did it. Oh, no freaking way. In the process though, he does hospitalize the trainer. <laughs> 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 Shouldn't have left Flavortown. Then afterwards, the family gets together and is like, why can't we just be Marmaduke's trainer? The movie acts like just because the trainer isn't there for the final competition, he no longer gets any credit for training Marmaduke. He just now gets to watch in a full body cast in the hospital, which the man, they got the guy in the cast really quick. He doesn't even get any resolve with the judge lady that he was smashing. I didn't really like the guy. I just thought they were gonna do more with him since it seemed like he was a main character in the movie. He's on the Netflix cover, come on. Did my dog dirty. For Marmaduke's talent, the kid rides on his back while they chase around a cat like a cowboy. This thing just goes on way too long and really I'm just thinking that I'm more impressed by the cat and the kid and it's really overshadowing the dog so not really a good plan. So we get to the crowning of the winner and there's been this one judge lady who's been biased the whole time in favor of J.K. Simmons. Big fan of Whiplash I suppose, fair enough. Obviously this is just one of the Davinci twins in a disguise. The movie's trying to paint this like it's so unfair that this judge is cheating but Marmaduke's only there because his trainer boned one of the judges so I mean shouldn't Marmaduke Marmaduke be disqualified? I just can't in good consciousness root for Marmaduke. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Marmaduke reveals the disguise and disqualifies J.K. Simmons, which leaves a new winner to be crowned, and luckily it is the dog that can literally do magic. It may be racist magic, but I mean, it's still magic. Omni Dog isn't happy that he lost and tries to steal the trophy, but Marmaduke stops him with his non-racist magic that I suppose he learned from his trainer. Really should have done that one for your talent. To force a dramatic climax, a cameraman on a dolly starts to fall, and everyone underneath it just stares up at it like, Oh my god, that thing could fall on me. Uh, then we get my favorite uncreative media trope when a character pushes one character out of the way of danger just to stand in the danger themselves. I got you, Billy! Oh, Marmaduke! Uh-oh. Like, dude, Marmaduke, are you making sure the thing is still gonna fall on you? Gravity is still working, move! Freaking dodge roll out of there, dude! Marmaduke gets crushed, and without even consulting a vet or an on-site medic or anything, the dad just immediately dives into an obituary speech. Marmaduke was a good dog. He was loved by all. Marmaduke never wanted to hurt anyone. His heart was always in the right place. We should never have tried to train you. We're on national TV, Dad. Stop making everything about you. Marmaduke, we will miss you. Very much. Yeah, if anyone had just put an ear up to Marmaduke's chest, they could tell that he was still breathing since he wakes up just a moment later. I imagine this family just holds a funeral ceremony anytime someone takes a nap. Son, it's time to get up for school. <sighs> oh, Margaret, the boy's dead. Well, he was a good boy. He had a B in math and a C in science. He always said his favorite class was lunch and we were disappointed in that, but with our fake drama resolve, we get to the movie's moral that anyone should accept themselves even if they don't win first place. You know, you just gotta, you just gotta win like top three though. Top three is pretty good. No one will love you if you're a failure like early Marmaduke though. Work harder, children. I'm the biggest dog around. Right, and the movie ends off with a cringe Pete Davidson dog rap. I try to be cool, but then I lose it. If I don't eat, I have a fit. Bow, wow, Marmaduke says bow, wow. Everybody now, bow, wow. I just hope there's a full movie soundtrack with more of these, okay? Now this is my life, as you can see, and I live with the Winslow family. Snoop Dogg who? It's, it's Pete Dog. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got for Marmaduke. But yeah, like, do all the things, the bell, the sub, the others, and you know the rest, okay? Peace. <laughs>
Mama Duke! He's a big dog.